There's a lot of guides out there that can show you how to get rid of villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons. However, there have been some questions from the community, and I thought it would be a good idea to clear things up. Hey guys, what's up? It's Phil, back with another Animal Crossing New Horizons episode. In this episode, I'm going to show you the fastest and easiest way to get rid of villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons, and we're getting started right now. So I've had some questions from some of my other videos, and also from my Discord server, which by the way you guys are welcome to come hang out with us sometime, and there was some confusion around the exact process for getting rid of villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons. There's lots of guides out there that work, but some seem to work better or faster than others. Let me know in the comment section down below which method you guys use the most. I'd be really interested to know if our strategies are the same. First of all, a villager will choose to leave when a few conditions are met. You must have finished getting your sixth villager moved in. So if you're fairly new to the game, then your villagers will start having the move out conversation sometime after the sixth villager. You must have spoken to a villager you wish to move out at least one time. I think that was pretty easy to avoid. It must be 15 days or more since the last villager moved out because the game has a 15 day cooldown timer set when a villager officially moves out. So around the 16th day is when the little thought bubble mechanic of the game starts to work again. It must also be five days from the last time that you've told a villager not to leave. So if you saw the little thought bubble and you told them to not leave, and what I mean by that is you told them to stay, you've completed that conversation, then the game sets a five day cooldown timer at that time. So after hearing those four conditions right there, you now know why most guides out there tell you to skip at least 15 days in the future to start off with, and that's really to avoid the cooldown timers that might be hanging around. Okay, so here's some reasons why a villager would not ask to leave, and these are super important to know because a lot of times, players will use these time travel methods and will still not get a thought bubble to show up, and it's usually because of one of these reasons. So reason number one is they are the most recent villager to move in. So in a nutshell, this means that if they were the last to move in, then you can't move them out until someone else is gone. Reason two is they were the last villager to ask to leave and you told them to stay. Not only does this set the five day cooldown timer that I mentioned just a second ago, but it can also exclude them from the thought bubble showing up for them a little while longer. Reason number three is if the villager's birthday is within seven days. And just to clarify there, it can be before or after the actual birthday. And I've seen this numerous times throughout the community and on my Discord server, where people were having such a hard time getting the thought bubble to show up, and it ended up being that the villager's birthday was really close by. And lastly, reason number four, their house is being moved. So if you're doing some sort of infrastructure changes and you ask to move the house, then that villager will not have a thought bubble showing up. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever ran into one of these reasons before. I'd really like to see which one is the most popular reason as to why you couldn't get a thought bubble to show up. Alright, now, right before we get into the actual process of kicking the villagers out, I've got one more piece of super important information that you've got to know. Because what I'm about to tell you could be another reason why you can't get a thought bubble to show up on a particular villager. And all this data and the processes that we're about to cover all comes from the Animal Crossing New Horizons data mining community, from my own research, from the official companion guidebook, and just practicing back and forth, so we can all trust that this is pretty legit. Friendship levels definitely matter with the thought bubble process, and I know originally we were kind of up in the air about whether or not that mattered, but it does. Every time that you load the game, it looks at the conditions that we just talked about to determine if the thought bubble would show up on any of your villagers, and then after that it looks to see which villager has the lowest friendship level with you, but also with other villagers. So if you're targeting a certain villager, then it would be best for you to max out your friendship with everyone else, and then try to reduce the friendship level with the one that you want to leave. According to the Animal Crossing New Horizons official companion guide, you should first start to increase your friendship levels by talking to each villager once per day. For every uninterrupted day that you talk to them, the friendship level increases exponentially. Once your friendship level is high enough, you'll be able to send them letters, give them gifts in person or by mail, and this will increase the friendship level even more.
If your friendship level is high enough, you can also wrap presents and give it to them for a major friendship bonus. Additionally, you can sell them any item they want for another large friendship bonus. While it's easy to make friends on this lovely little island, it can be just as easy to hurt residents' feelings. You can make a villager like you a whole lot less by hitting them with a tool, pushing them around a lot, or by accepting a request but fail to successfully carry it out. You can also gift them garbage items such as tires, weeds, or rotten turnips. So if you're running into a situation where you're targeting a certain villager, which I believe all of us are, then you'll want to take the friendship levels into consideration as you try to get rid of your most unwanted villager. Now, do keep in mind that there is another method for replacing villagers, and that is by using the campsite method. I'll not cover that here, but I'll put a link down in the description of this video. But the basic process is once you get a campsite villager, you can keep resetting the game until the campsite villager chooses the current resident that you want to leave. Ultimately, we need to avoid any cooldown timers, avoid any of the reasons why a villager would not move out, and it be at least 30 days since the last villager moved out. Because 30 days is the ideal time to look for Thought Bubble since it maxes your percentage chance that a Thought Bubble will show up on your island for any given day. Hang with me to the end of this process though because I've got some critical information that you have to know when you're using time travel and moving villagers out, otherwise you could run into a terrible glitch. For the purposes of this video, let's pick a date and leap 30 days into the future. So we're going to choose July 1st and we're going to leap forward to August 1st. And you're also going to want to go ahead and set your time to be around 1pm. And the reason we do that is because it's the most common time for the villagers to be out wandering around. It'll be a lot easier for you to see that thought bubble. Then we're going to load the game, we're going to save and exit. And then you're going to go and hop one day forward. Now you're going to load the game and you're going to look for the little thought bubble over the villager's head. So if you ran around for about a minute or two and you didn't find a thought bubble, then you're going to save and exit your game and hop one day forward. If you loaded the game and the thought bubble was on the wrong villager, then you're going to save and exit your game and hop one day forward. And if you loaded the game and you found that thought bubble, then you talked to the villager and you got a gift or a reaction or something else that you weren't expecting then you can actually go ahead and receive that reaction, that gift from the villager. Just make sure that you save and exit so that you retain whatever it was that they gave you, and then hop one day forward. And then if you got the thought bubble to show up for the correct villager, then great, you're done. You can have that move out conversation, make sure you save your game, and then be sure to smash that like button. Now here's the super critical information that I was talking about earlier. You have to be very careful when you're using time travel to kick out your villagers because you could get stuck with the previous villager's house exterior. If you time travel backwards at all or more than one day at a time forward, then you'll run into a major glitch. Your new villager will be stuck with the old villager's house exterior. So the best way to avoid that is to never time travel backwards after you have started the move out process with the existing villager. And only time travel one day forward at a time until the new villager has completely moved in. So a step by step would look something like this. You got the thought bubble and it shows up on the villager. You have the move out conversation and then you save and exit your game. You time travel one day forward, you load the game, you save, and you exit. And then you basically repeat step number two until the new villager has moved in and they are completely out of their move-in boxes. Hey, check out one of my other Animal Crossing how-to videos. For example, I've got a whole playlist dedicated to getting rid of villagers. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe.